Dews. However, that's pronounced. I thought that Didgery dozens. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I thought that was I thought that was your new love. Well, I I do enjoy it, um, but uh, but uh, yeah, I I didn't know I was going to maybe play anything, but that I always do like to play something. Well, you know, I can't have a musician on the show without you know putting him on the spot. Okay, <laughs> make me a second here. I have a very protective case, like a. Yeah. You know, like maybe a weapon type of uh, case, you know, like very. I'm stern. proud of you that you have it put away. <laughs> yes. Okay, let's see here. Really. Not sitting on a stand. All right, so w while you're putting it together, Laura, what do, what do you play? Uh, I play the euphonium. Oh, cool. And what is that? Yeah, it's a good question. I, I you know, I explain this probably i don't know how to explain it i i get this question all the time because nobody knows what a euphonium is i don't know what a euphonium is <laughs> oh. i'm and, just guessing it's like an accordion am i anywhere close you know <laughs> i've got an accordion a lot um no it's it looks like a small tuba it's like yay big is it, in, is it is it in your room or do you leave it at school it's at school um it's <laughs> it's like in the same it sounds like a more warm tone trombone. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Very so good. Same range. I, I wasn't even anywhere in the right ballpark. I was <laughs> imagining. I was imagining a bellows like instrument. Oh, that'd <laughs> what, be about, what about you, Matt? What do you play? I play trumpet and wind symphony, and in pep band, I'm one of the conductors. So I'm up there with my the conductors. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. We have a. a pretty large team of student conductors to help us get through all the events so that none of us are overwhelmed. And uh, they do a great job. No, that's fantastic. All right, I was gonna say, Mike, we're ready for you. All right, here's a short little thing. <laughs> I proved that I can play more than one note at the same time. <laughs> it's a, yeah, here we go. I, I, free? Oh. Yeah. I, I couldn't hear anything. You couldn't hear anything? No. Do I not have my sound on from here? I wonder if it maxed out the sound or something. Oh, like it might have. I, I wonder. Further back. Yeah, Zoom's not exactly designed for uh, musical instruments, typically. That's a good point. How about... Made us, he made all the trombonists have to play a lot more high notes. So we, we're in awe of him, but we're not thankful. <laughs> <laughs> play so many high notes. Yeah. Oh, that's great. So Matt, you play, you conduct, but you also play tr trumpet, you said, right? Yeah. Got your trumpet handy? I actually do. I have both of them. There you go. Come on, give us, give us a, give us a 30 second interlude. While he's grabbing that, I can show you, this is what the euphonium looks like. Oh, I've seen those. Okay. And I'm sorry, you know, like I've learned at, at, at the point in life where I am, if I do not know a vocabulary word, I am unashamed to ask about it. <laughs> <laughs> my mom raised me <laughs> you know i'm a reasonably intelligent and lettered woman and you know i think i could spell euphonium but i don't know what it was <laughs> a, a lot of people a lot of people refer to it as baritone too so it's not okay. always euphonium yep. no that's really cool i'll be watching for you and you know so you're you guys did, did either of you play at um this weekend I did not. Oh, you mean jazz? Um, uh, in the pep band. Oh, I didn't know. I played in the jazz concert. I did not. Okay. Play. Yeah. Yeah. How was it? It was pretty good. Um, it was fun. We had uh, some. We played 
some swing stuff and then we had like the um the swing club came and danced oh and that sounds it. fun yeah it was pretty fun Swing, so I, I have to, I need to get these on my calendar, but I was out of town until recently. So I uh, just got back from a trip to the Houston area. Nice. Uh, and I'll be showing a slide about it, but I was in Houston. I left Monday, no problem leaving town. And there was that big windstorm that came through. Um, so that later flight, the second flight didn't leave until like seven hours later or something like that. Um, but then I got back easily on Friday. So it was kind of like an on-time trip. Oh, here he is. He's got his trumpet. Yeah, so I'm actually at my house right now with roommates doing various academic work. So I have something called a silent mute that I can put in my instrument and it's super, super quiet. All right. So come up on. Hopefully that'll, hopefully we'll, uh oh he just fell out. Sometimes if he has the right, uh, connecting materials he could maybe send it through zoom possibly so that his roommates wouldn't hear it is that mm -hmm. true? no i don't know what happened sorry about that oh that's all right all right well we'll we'll be able to hear you we can turn you up on our end yeah awesome <laughs> it's no louder than speaking too which is very nice i can practice at night or when people are doing stuff in my house well and we could hear it perfectly well it was a good it was a good volume um what's, what's interesting is that zoom is not very good at picking up music is what i'm ascertaining you know it's just terrible at it so so everybody out there in in who's online already you're gonna have to come live to some of these um yeah. performances please all right, we're heading up close to the hour. So I was gonna say, yeah, the, um, while I was in Houston, um, it was interesting because um, the Yankees were playing right downtown at the same time we had our alumni um, gathering. So it, it, it was kind of, it was kind of um, traffic jammed to say the least. <laughs> yeah. And it was a beautiful weekend here after the, that big wet weather, when, there was huge winds on Monday, right? Just huge winds. Yep, huge winds. Hmm? Yeah, Ken, Ken Scott for congratulations, Ken. Uh, he was saying go Astros in the end. Um... <laughs> yes, so um, folks out there in the audience, um, we're gonna get started in just a minute, but um, you can communicate with us by typing a question in the Q&A, which only we can read, but then we can read it out loud, you know, so. Um, so chat is not does not work, but you can type, you can sort of use Q and A like a chat. So Paul mentions he sang in the men's glee club under B. Franz Schubert. Yes, yep, that's a long time ago. One of the earlier <laughs> music professors we had here. Maybe maybe the second or third person. We had. And I think he was instrumental in eventually making the pepper into curry. It was, it was like quite a long time ago. No, that's totally awesome. All right, so I am going to start sharing my screen. And uh, here's my first slide. I'm getting all these indications of being late for something. I'm not late for Husky Bites. I am here. <laughs> oh, no, now I've launched calendar. <laughs> I, don't, I don't use that function here. All right, I, I can't make that go away. Go away. Oh, no, I made it worse. All right, I'm going to give up on this computer Doing better than I did so uh, I applaud oh. yeah <laughs> I, and now I've made this whole thing up here and I want it to go away this is what always happens all right I'm going to snooze for five minutes let's hope let's hope that doesn't do anything bad there we go <laughs> all right well, well welcome everybody um it's wonderful to um to be hosting Husky Bites once again my name is Janet Callahan my role at Michigan Tech uh, is that I'm the Dean of the College of Engineering. Uh, and my email, if you should like to reach me, is just simply my last name, which is Callahan, C-A-L-L-A-H-A-N at mtu.edu. And I'm always loving hearing from people. So um, thank you. Thank you for everything. So I wanted to begin by giving you a little bit of a 
um, explaining where I was uh, last week, you saw me in my hotel room, but I was in Houston. One of the things that I did was to host an alumni social. And so in case you wanna know what that might look like, here are some images that um, various people took that night. So what we had was a mixture of um, uh, undergraduate women engineering students who were there for the Society of Women Engineering National Meeting, which was in Houston. So there were about 10 of those students. We had a prospective um, uh, uh, future Husky who visited us uh, and the son of um, one of our alum who brought her there and, and accompanied her there. And then lots of alumni uh, of, of all ages, as you can see, we had a faculty member there, Gretchen Hine, uh, and you know, we had, we had snacks and, and uh, beverages and it was, it was a very nice time. So um, I just wanted to say, if anybody ever wanted to host an alumni event in your area, Michigan Tech helps with that. They line up the venue, you know, somebody from Michigan Tech will come to help pay for it, you know, and uh, it's just, it is helpful to have somebody on the ground kind of helping to greet people though. Um, and so that's what an alumni social event looks like. This is our menu. We're already um, in our fifth um, episode uh, uh, and we'll be, I'm really looking forward, uh, but just to mention a few things up, up soon, we've got um, Kitchen Metallurgy coming up with Walt Milligan um, in material science and engineering. And uh, we're really hoping not to cause um, marital difficulties because of our very strong opinions, because um, I am a metallurgist as well on how to use kitchen pans and things like that um, and how to care for them properly. Uh, and so in advance, I just want to say this, this could cause marital um, spats. <laughs> um, thank you. I wanted to just mention one more time that if you want to ask a question, just type them in the Q&A feature and, and folks, students, um, don't answer them like as we go along. It's going to be very tempting because we'll answer them after, after the talk. Um, we'll answer them live. All right, and then with that, I'm going to stop sharing and then um, you guys can start sharing and I'm gonna introduce uh, our lead speaker who has got a lot of backup tonight. So Mike Christensen is our faculty member joining us this evening. He is a professor in the Department of Visual and Performing Arts and the director of bands. Uh, he leads three bands. He's a trombone player, uh, classically trained. Um, he band leading is a family tradition and, and he was the fourth generation and there's a now a fifth generation who already um, are active in this. Um, uh, so Mike has um, all kinds of qualifications in music from Minnesota State, um, from Manhattan School of Music and from Rutgers University where he earned his doctoral degree. Um, an interesting thing about Mike is that um, he played for two years with Ray Charles. He has a Grammy nomination for the best large jazz ensemble album with the John Hollenbach Large Ensemble. And I, you know, I'm gonna let you take it from here, Mike, because there's so much more I could say about you, but um, thank you so much for taking, um, taking on this Husky Bites episode. Well, thanks for inviting me. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, so I should introduce myself, is that? Uh... Well, and, and your, when your students start speaking, um, introduce them or have them introduce themselves. Yeah, yeah so you I'm, take it from here. So I'm, I'm Mike Christensen, the director of bands, as has been stated, which is great. And then um, Matt Betwee, who is one of our pep band conductors, and Laura Bufanda, who is one of our pep band members and also a member of Superior Wind Symphony. Those are the two students who are joining me on this uh, discussion about music here at Michigan Tech. And one of the reasons I picked these two people, um, there are many, many people I could have chosen. And the reason I like these two people together is because they have both been in both of the major ensembles that I'm in charge of, which is the Huskies Pep Band and Superior Wind Symphony. Huskies Pep Band is a pep band. It is an unusual kind. There are maybe no more than a dozen that are sort of in our style. Uh, we are often referred to as a scramble band. And what it means is we'll perform outside in public, but we will never intentionally form, well, we will only ever intent, we, we will only ever form one shape and we will never practice forming that shape. And then when we are moving in a parade, 
We are not in any rank or a file at any point. There's no reason for us to do that, so we don't. Um, and we play at uh, about 60 home athletic events every year in, what is it, five or six different sports. And um, we have a lot of fortunate that we have a very large pep band so that we can actually break the band into smaller platoons so that none of us get completely worn out from playing all of those events uh, during the year. And we will play for any event that we think is a good idea to do. Um, one time- Hey, Mike, uh, I'm, yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt. I'm, I'm yeah. getting some folks here that think you're not close enough to the mic or you need oh. to raise the volume a bit. They're probably correct. Is this any better? Uh, I I think your 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 volume is fine. Um, okay. I'm hearing you just fine, but okay. others are not. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> I have it up on what I think is as high as I can get it to go. Okay. That you sound better now. Thanks. Okay. Good. Yeah. Um. Let's see. I don't know if I was saying anything very important uh, just a second ago, but uh, yeah, I think we were introducing the uh, uh, Matt and yeah, and Laura. Yep, yeah, they have both been in uh, the wind ensemble and the pep band for quite a few years, and uh, I thought that might be good for, to have two students that have been in both and can kind of compare and contrast what those are like. Um, we, we have played for other odd things, like one time we were asked to play for the reading of the United States Constitution, and we did that. Um, we were asked by the local Chevy dealership to play when, when they opened their new dealership, and we did, we, we used a small band to do that sort of thing. Um, so we will take uh, suggestions, but uh, we may not say yes to all of them, um, because we have a pretty, busy schedule as it is um and uh thankfully as i said the the band is pretty large so that we can split it up so that we don't all kind of get completely overwhelmed from playing all the games that we do we're very proud to be the first uh band to play women's volleyball in our conference we were the first band and so now all of our opponent opponent schools have bands of some kind in their arenas when they go so we're very proud of that, that we forced that to happen. And, um, and um, yeah. Nice. Yep. yep. Nice work there. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have, the, the pep band has made, I don't know if it's like three CDs at least, I think now. And um, you can find those on sale, I think, in University Images or the bookstore or someplace like that. Um, sometimes you can even purchase them. Uh, one of the things we try and do every year is have a pep band concert. And as I, I say to the band, I said, so that, you know, the people that really like to hear the band don't have all those annoying athletic events getting in the way of uh, listening to the pep band. And, uh, <laughs> I'm kidding uh, kind of about that, but... Um, but uh, so uh, you can you can get uh, some of the recordings at those events um, and uh, take them home and enjoy them. Um, so we, and so we, and yeah. there's a surprise appearance at the very end of graduation. Oops, I broke. I, I broke. <laughs> <laughs> shouldn't have said that. <laughs> yes, yes. No, that's one of our very favorite things. Yeah. Um. So let's see what's next. What would be a next? Good thing to talk about next. Uh, how did I get here? My, uh, I grew up in Fargo, North Dakota, which is when I grew up in it, I did not know it'd be an incredibly famous city that uh, had a, an incredible movie, uh, many months of series spinoffs, uh, you know, but, uh, uh, I decided I wanted to be a professional musician when I was pretty young, and I kept that in the corner of my mind for a long, long time. And I did a number of things, and I eventually did exactly that. I eventually uh, learned enough and got enough degrees to go to a few different places and had enough uh, uh, experience being in different bands that I was able to be 
in uh, Ray Charles's band for two years where we kind of went to, I would say we went to maybe like 12 to 16 different countries. And oh, most, wow. most of the United States, uh, 40 probably of the United States. And we were gone like six months at a time. And then they would take a break and we'd come back after another six months. And, uh, and I got to be on one of his CDs, one of the last CDs he made. Um, I'm playing on it. And, uh, and it was, so it was, it was just what I hoped it would be. It was an incredible experience. I got to see a lot of places. I got to hear a lot of great music, not only what we were playing in the band with Ray, but we were sometimes were playing at festivals where there were a lot of other bands. Like we played in Brazil with some incredible, incredible musicians. And it was a mutual love of each other. We didn't really know what each other was doing exactly, but we were just very impressed with how it sounded. And, uh, um, and then once that was done, my real dream uh, was that I would make my living as a professional musician. And so when I got done with Ray Charles, I decided it was time to move to New York, which is what all of my uh, mentors told me to do. So I did. And it took me a while, as it does for everyone, when you first get there to get any kind of activity. No one calls you because they don't know who you are. They don't know if you're any good. But you do, can slowly do that, appear at a place. And one of the things I, I like to tell students is that the way you apply for a job in music even now is by going into a room and making music with people they will be making an assessment of what you did whether you like it or not and and if you did a positive thing the next time they might decide you weren't as good or vice versa so you can always change someone's assessment of you if you meet them a second time or a third time in a different environment. So what I'm trying to say is when I was applying for the job I have here, I had never written a resume or a cover letter or had a phone interview or anything like that. I had no idea how to do what our students do when they're applying for jobs. I didn't understand any of that. Uh, it took me months to finally kind of figure out how to start making it through the phone round and then I made it, I was um, asked to be in some different places. And one of the reasons I'm at Michigan Tech is because they're the first people to offer me the job. And then I met my dear friend and mentor, Mike Irish, who had been the jazz band director here for quite a long time and had been a student here even before that. And um, he gave me a whole bunch of help and um, he made this great ominous statement. You'll be surprised why you like this job. <laughs> wow. That's, um, interesting. And, and, and it turns out that I, I, it took me a few years to understand what he meant. But uh, what I found out is not only do I completely agree with it, but I think I found a few more reasons to like the job that maybe he wasn't even thinking, think of, what, thinking of when he originally had that, made that statement. Um, and so, one of the, yeah. Hey, so Mike, try moving your mic up close because you have it by your ear. It's, Sorry. it's right there. Just try moving it up toward your mouth a little bit, maybe. Like that? Yeah, let's see if that helps. Okay, sorry. All right. So, um, uh, blah, 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 blah. Um, <laughs> well, and so you, you must really, was, was Mike right? Oh, absolutely. So, so one of the things, I realized, so in, in getting music degrees in order to be qualified to get a band director job, you have to go to some fairly strong music program schools. And um, in most of those schools, they're usually pretty strict about whether you're practicing or not, or if you're practicing enough, or whether you're researching enough, or whether you're, I don't know, doing all the things you need to do. And one of the things that happens at just about all music conservatories is you get yelled at a lot. You get threatened. No. no, I mean, because if you go to the Curtis Institute, which is one of the hardest places to get in as an orchestral player, if you're not in the, you know, top four cellists, you're not going to be in the first orchestra. And if you're not in the first orchestra, you're probably not going to be in the in the Philadelphia orchestra. You're going to be in some lesser orchestra if you're in another orchestra at all. You know, so it, it, it's very, very competitive. And I've heard all kinds of horror stories about it. But one of the things Mike was pointing out was, since we don't have the music major here, 
we don't have to yell at anybody or, or, or chase them down or, or, or say anything too mean about them at all. We, we're able to present music the way that we agreed that we like it, which is that it, we just love doing it. We want all of our students to take part in music as much as possible because it just makes you feel better. And now the idea that it makes you feel better is actually clinically backed up by the CDC who just said for brain health, step one, listen to some music. And if you're even, if you're good enough, play music, that's even better. And then if you play it with another person, that's amazing. They say that's like the healthiest thing your brain can attempt to decipher is you playing music with at least one other person at the same time. That interaction is, is like brain health in a can. You know, <laughs> it, 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 is, it is literally one of the healthiest things a human being can do. Which, and so we didn't really know that officially. We all, I think, probably internally thought that's probably healthy and good for people. But it's, it's sort of beautiful that the CDC did their science and said, yeah, that's what everyone should be doing. <laughs> so, so we're especially proud that all along we've been offering that sort of thing to all of our students. You know, we've sent for many, many years. That's, that's been something all of our students could do here. And we're very proud of that. Well, and you know, I'm going to see if, if Sue can put together a poll question ah. um, because it would be interesting to know have how were you involved in music at Michigan Tech? Yes, no. Um, yeah. And and we'll just assume that everybody who responds um, is an alum. So don't respond if you're not an alum. So when you were at Michigan Tech, were you involved in music? And we'll we'll launch that in about five minutes to give Sue a minute to put it together. It would be I have met many many many. Um, engineering alumni who were in pep band and 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 I I'm convinced that it is um well what I what is certainly true and I think it's been studied is well I studied at Boise State so the student athletes at Boise State University had higher GPAs um that, and I'm only talking about engineering students than the you know your average engineering student um they and I think they learn they're very disciplined they're very focused um, they use their time very wisely, but um, I, I imagine the same is true for your um, for for the folks involved in music because you have to carve away that time for music, yep. and that means you have to be budgeting your time in order to to be able to remain in school. Right. So it, I'm I'm wondering if Laura, Laura's not nodding her head and Matt is not nodding his head either. So I don't know if this is true or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it definitely is. Balancing out the time for uh, being in music organizations is a pretty big part of my time here at school. Well, and and so Mike, do, do Matt or Laura or and Laura have presentations to give or or? I, I don't know if they do. I would love to see them. So now would be a great time to talk about you know what it means to you from a brain health perspective. You know what is is music uh, that thing that takes you away. Um, you know, what does music do for, for you? All right, what does music do for you, Laura? And lean, come in closer so we can see your face better. Um, well, music, like ever since, I've been doing music in some form for like most of my life. I like, even before I played music, I did dance. Um, and that was like super um, stress relieving when I was little. Um, when I started band, it was something that I really enjoyed, like right off the, right off the bat. I loved it. Um, it was actually like to this day, ever since I started in like fourth grade to this day is the thing that I pretty much prioritize the most in my life. Um, I get stressed out pretty easily. And honestly, like the reason I chose this school was for music. I liked, mm -hmm. um, what I knew about the music program and I, um, I knew it was a stressful school at times, um, but I was like, you know what, whatever, that's fine. Um, I'm here for the music program. Um, music definitely, it's so fun to me. Like there's, I don't have a bad thing to say about it. It's been nothing but um, beneficial to my mental health and it just, yeah, it's always gonna be 
the main thing that I turn to whenever I'm, you know, stressed. And well, and and your instruments, I, I really, I mean, I know that it is at Michigan Deck. That's probably because you need to go into one of those rooms with doors that shut and in order to play it. Yeah, it's um, it can be can be a loud instrument. Even um, for two of my years here, I lived in a house with seven other roommates. Um, so I, I always practiced on campus just because I didn't want to be disruptive to them. But also, um, I don't know what I'm trying to say. But like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's convenient. Plus, it's a pretty heavy instrument. And it's not something I like to have to walk back and forth. Plus, I play in so many ensembles. It's like, I don't see the point of taking it off campus when there's practice rooms that I can use. <laughs> My, um, I, I, I can't remember, I, I, I believe it was a bass, a, I, it was some sort of huge instrument. I, I wanna say it was a, like a bass violin, my oldest son, that was the instrument. So the teacher assigned him to it because he was like the tallest, biggest kid. And it was the only, well, now that I ended up having to like drag this thing back and forth and back and forth. And so when Laura, who's my, my daughter, um, when it was her time for an instrument, I'm like, how about a flute? You know, like a flute that's nice and small. You know? yep, yep. <laughs> but in, in reality, for the most part, um, those huge instruments or weird ones that people don't know the name of, those always, in most cases, do need people to play them. Whereas there are often a dozen flute players. <laughs> And you might not be able to pick any of them out. No offense to the flute community, but you might not be able to pick any of them out if you're their parent or whatever. It just sounds like. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like. Well, yeah. I was I was fine with that after the after the, yeah. you know, the bass smile. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right, so Matt, what gives you joy about music? Yeah, well, being an engineering student, music is kind of the break in my in my work week. Uh, everything I do academically and professionally is that left brain stuff, you know, analytical mathematics, you know, it kind of gets a little bit draining. So being able to kind of take a break from it and be more creative and expressive through music is a really big part of my time here at school. And in addition to the music itself, being in the ensembles is really the best way I know of to be involved in campus and the community. And, you know, being in Pep Band in particular, there's just such a good reputation and, I don't know, it just brings a lot of joy to be such a big part of the Michigan Tech experience. You know, everyone knows the Pep Band at hockey. It's a big part of me to be able to be a factor in that. And so you, and so you are, you are one of, how many um, platoons are there? Uh, there are three, uh, I guess we call them splits for pep band. Yeah. And uh, there are five student conductors that kind of split up who's going to what events to try to keep it balanced. Okay. And so in a typical event, like the ones for hockey, I mean, there, it looks like there's 30 people playing. I mean, it, it is not a small group. Yeah, hockey is the generally the smallest group that we have because we're limited by the number of seats in the hockey arena and that's generally 30 to 50 usually closer to 50 on the more popular games aka northern mm -hmm. and uh football and volleyball and basketball when we have all the space in the world we're usually you know in that 50 to 70 and during band camp at the start of the year when everybody's together uh sometimes it's been close to 200 in the same room which is a uh, pretty noisy that's really, really cool. Yeah. Well, and so you basically are always paying attention to the game because you're watching for a break in the action in order to kind of do something. And then while they're doing that, you're always, you're, I mean, I, I noticed maybe not you, but somebody, you know, one of you, one of you <laughs> um, always watching this because you're, you're not just conducting, you're also watching what's going on in the game yeah. and making a judgment call about what you should be doing, right? <laughs> Yeah, the uh, conducting pep band is less musical than uh, the Wind Symphony music. Uh, it's much more of a, almost more on the production side of a sports game. 
uh, you can see in this picture on screen, I'm wearing a headset. I'm communicating with the production team at the hockey games. And we have these sets of criteria for what sorts of things we can play at what points in the different sports games. And I'm always keeping track of what's going on and making sure we're playing the right things at the right times and not breaking any NCAA rules about who's allowed to play when. I didn't even realize there were NCAA rules about who can play what when. <laughs> there are quite a few, actually. Yeah. They take it pretty seriously, especially at hockey. The, so, the, band, so, the band in general has been great about that. They um, usually, as far as I know, there's always somebody who has the entire NCAA rule book up to date on their phone so that in case we're pleading with a referee to give us this call, we want to make sure that we're correct on the call so that they'll have to give in and let us uh, change it. Um, yeah. And another reason we like to know about the rules is so we can figure out how close we can get to breaking them without, <laughs> without, without breaking them. We'd like to know how it's described. And so um, we have fun with that. It, it's a... <laughs> It's a sciencey way, a science scientific uh, way of thinking about it. I think so. I enjoy that a great deal. Well, it it to me, I mean, so I'm I'm generally facing my my seats face where the band area is. I'm about this, you know, approximately, and um, and it's just a joy. Like I find myself just paying a lot of attention to the band, probably more attention to the band than to the game. Although I, you know, that's me. <laughs> Because they're they're just fun. It's fun to watch them there, and so I I don't know. I know most of the people watching are alumni, but um, the, this is not a normal band. They do not they do not look normal. They do not act normal. <laughs> Some of them are wearing no shirts, you know, underneath their overalls. They're they're very they're very. Some of them are wearing milk cartons on their heads. I mean, you know, <laughs> what do you, what does your um, costume look like, Laura? Um, well, so I, I kind of identify as a floater. So I play, um, alto sax sometimes too in the pep bands. So my typical getup, um, would be like my stripes, my alto sax section Jersey. And then I, um, my hat's been known to change up from a princess crown to, um, for anyone that knows Bob's burgers, I like to wear the Louis. Louise bunny ears hat too <laughs> <laughs> it's this is one I mean it's just marvelous all right so um Sue I don't know if you had a chance to build that poll but it would be interesting so the, the question would be if you you know if you are an alum did, were you involved with music um and if so in what way so um there's a poll right in front of you who participated in the following music programs as a husky so the choices are Keweenaw Symphony Orchestra, Superior Wind Symphony, Concert Band, Jazz, Choir, and Huskies Pep Band. And um, while people are filling that out, I, I'm, I'm going to mention that my instrument is um, choir. <laughs> All right. And I would love to get involved in a, um, in a group um, that didn't have to practice all the time at, a, at, a, at the same time of the week because I'm often traveling. Sure. Yeah, that's tough. <laughs> <laughs> and so we have a lot of um, Huskies. So um, uh, of the people who responded, um, 23 out of 27 um, were in the Huskies pep band. We have, we have over 100 participants, but this is kind of of the people who attended tech. And then the next highest category is concert band with 11 at 41% and the next highest two or three maybe choir jazz and this and this and the Keweenaw Symphony Orchestra. Mm -hmm. um, cool, thanks for doing that, um, Sue. Yeah. Well, and so we, um, um, if, if you have anything more formal to present, we can do that next, but um, we have 25 um, questions that are piling up in the Q and A. And so, yeah. um, uh, <laughs> Jared says, Janet, I hear you. You will need to come and sing with the Michigan Tech Concert Choir. There you go. You know, you know I did sing um, a retirement song for Bill Predabon recently, uh, and that's my claim to fame in the area uh, during his formal retirement reception. <laughs> he told me afterwards, Janet, nobody's ever sung me a song before. 
<laughs> oh. All right, so students, feel free to pick some questions here or to just read out a comment. Yeah, so I see one question about how much experience you need to be to be in the pet band. Uh, there is actually no tryout to be a member of the Huskies pet band. You just need to be reasonably competent on your instrument, uh, enough to play our music, which is not really the most technically challenging stuff, and have the right attitude, which is excitement and school spirit. So really, if you've ever played a musical instrument before and you have the interest, we're pretty much always happy to take people. And um, Kent, who's one of our regular alumni, um, he, he's chiming in with that um, uh, Mr. B. Franz Schubert was the Glee Club director and also the band director. Yep. The band took a back seat to the Glee Club. The 58 <laughs> yearbook has a picture of the Glee Club, but not the band. And the uh, band played hockey games and football games. It was to have fun and to have a good seat in that and. Um, and in his day, band was next to the booth in D Stadium behind the West End goal. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, um, and then uh, Glee Club performed at his high school in Detroit in 56. So maybe that would be an interesting thing that the band could be doing is um, touring around uh, Michigan high schools. That would be great. Well, and Nicole, who is one of our alumni in Alaska, played a contra alto bass clarinet and wind symphony for a few years. Awesome instrument. Yes. I think we still have that instrument. <laughs> yeah, we do. So feel free. The, I, I answer the questions in random order. So they, they don't have we don't have to take them in order. Just anything you want. See a comment. Yeah. Um, I see a comment that says, I have heard that musicians are great at math. That's not always true. I'm the worst. <laughs> I'm the absolute worst at math. Um, I always have been. I can't do academics to save my life. Um, I did not do great in music theory because um, it's a lot like math. Um, it is. So okay. I think there's like two kinds of musicians. There's people that are really good that can play by ear aren't super great at like sight reading music um, or sight singing or anything along those lines. That's me. Um, but I do know, um, I know a few percussionists though. I think in all the percussionists I know are were either math majors or super good at math. So I think maybe percussionists might be good at math, <laughs> but it, it makes sense though. <laughs> So Dean asks, do you still use letter number combinations to call out the song? For example, B9. No. Yeah, so we don't do that these days. Uh, we utilize technology as much as we can and we have an app called Slack, which is a, a professional communications app. And what we do is we send out set lists on our phones so that everybody can just pick their phone out of their pocket and read what's gonna be played in what order without us having to yell anything at all. People can just see it right in front of them. And some sections have taken it even further with utilizing technology and they've put their whole music libraries on their phone. So they can open up their phone, see what song it is, put, put to the next app and then uh, have it right there in their hand. In other words, they can read the music right off their phone? Yeah. Right, yeah. That's impressive. It is. Very cool. So I see two questions I can kind of combine about technicalities of the instruments. Uh, Carrie said that it was often so cold in the D that the brass players kept their mouthpieces in their pockets so that their lips wouldn't freeze to the brass. And uh, I haven't played in the D. We used the, uh, the McKenna Student Ice Arena, but I've heard that it's awfully chilly in there. Yep. And uh, somebody else asked about uh, a couple members were playing plastic trombones. And uh, you know what's the deal with those? And really, it's just being creative to get your instruments to survive the demands of pep band. Uh, a lot of people, myself included, have nicer instruments that do sound better than those plastic instruments. But when we're playing outside in events like the Hike and Pipe Parade or in the D, uh, you don't want to have something ice cold made of metal because they contract a ton with the temperature changes. And uh, like you mentioned, they're awful to put up against your lips when it's 
you know, freezing outside. So we use various different ways to get around the temperature and the kind of the way the instruments get beat up at that band. I can relate to that. My first year, and this is why I haven't gone back to football. My first year, I didn't have a plastic mouthpiece yet. So I, um, I was playing a school, school baritone and I had my metal mouthpiece and it froze into the instrument because we were playing in the middle of a snowstorm. And that wasn't fun. It took me, I think, two weeks to get it out. Um, oh, no. Yeah, I, d I don't like football anyway. So <laughs> it's just another reason why I didn't go back. But yeah, it's, it's not fun and your mouth is freezing all the time. And yeah. Well, and, and you know, um, of course, you know, metals expand when they're heated and they get smaller when they are cooled down. So I'm guessing your mouthpiece was made out of a different alloy than the rest of the instrument. Pro usually they are, they're made out of more noble elements, aren't they? Like more silver and copper and that kind of stuff. Um, Might depend on the mouthpiece, I don't know a whole lot. Yeah, no, I, I, think, I think we had a, um, we had a, yeah. Ooh, that sounds like a bad problem. Several years ago, Bob and Nelva attended a band Orama. Is there one in the future? Mm, I don't know. That's a great question. What is a band Orama? Does anybody know? I believe he is speaking of it where all the bands, all of them play. Ah. So jazz, tap, concert band, Superior Wind Symphony. Uh, I don't know. I think that's <laughs> roughly what he's talking about. I believe they used to have those. I'll have to look that up. I'll go into the archives. And, there you um, go. Well, and here's another archives question. When did Pep Band get the striped overhauls? Uh, I think it was roughly in 1959. Hmm. When we decided to become a scramble band. What did they wear before that? Um, well, I, I know when they were first on a field, they were kind of an ROTC drill band and they wore normal band uniforms with, you know, hats and maybe the feathers coming out of them or, you know, just like any other band might in the, in the country. They did that. And then um, I think it was Don Karanen who became the band director in the 50s and he did two really important things. He turned the pep band into a scramble band. And he also said, we're gonna have jazz in the curriculum now, starting right now. And we were one of the very first universities to put jazz in our curriculum. Well, and was he a jazz, did he love jazz? I mean, what oh, motivated yes. that? Oh yes, yeah. He, yeah, he was a very excellent jazz, jazz performer and educator and he, uh, Mike Irish, was one of his students in those early years. Oh, that's very interesting. Yeah. Um, so Dean um, mentions that in 82 to 85, we, the pep band, was dubbed the Marching Amoeba. Yes. Yeah. Marching Amoeba. <laughs> that's exactly right. That We like to keep it that way. Um, <laughs> yep. Yeah. Well, and um, so there's so many questions. Please just you can just see I'm just choosing them randomly here and there. Take 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 a turn. Paul mentions that um, when he was in the band, we toured downstate high schools and made an LP record recorded at a recruit recording studio. So just do you, we probably have all these in the archives, right? All the all the various recordings of the jazz band. Sure. The, sure. So um, alumni, if you do not know, we have of course a library and we also have a Michigan Tech archives. So when you come up and visit, you should make time to kind of and even let them know in advance. I would really like to hear band, and you, you know, and maybe you could even take a recording of it somehow. I don't know, but um, and Nicole mentions we used to have bandorama in the fall when she attended in the early two thousands. So the, um, bandorama must mean something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So there's somebody who did ask about a student getting involved. Uh, how would a student get involved with a music minor on campus? Uh, Mike, do you want to talk to that? Sure. Um, you, uh, I think our music minor is still a 19 credit minor. And we've definitely had numerous people accidentally get a music minor without knowing if they were that close. When someone pointed out, you know, you've been taking all these classes because you love music. And so you're one class short of a minor. Do you want to do? Oh, okay. Well, then I'll, I'll, I'll do that. So that's happened to a number of people who, who just love music and want to take all those classes anyway. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and you can, um, you can be in ensembles or you could just take a lot of classes that are music based. Uh, you could take private lessons on certain instruments. If we happen to have somebody who lives up here for another reason, we can't pay anyone to move up here to teach banjo or, 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 or bassoon or any other instrument. But if they already live here, we're glad mm -hmm. to pay them to teach lessons. And so it's, it's hit or miss from time to time as to whether they have your instrument, but uh, we do the best we can do. And, it's, and uh, that's a good way to get those credits if you're going to do a music minor is to take lessons. All right, now I'm getting a couple of corrections. One from Doug, mm -hmm. uh, who graduated in 69. Striped overalls came long after, and Kent agrees. First time for striped overalls was not 1959. Okay. So we're gonna have to, he was in band until 63 and they had no striped overalls. Aha. So it happened afterwards. We're gonna have to get our history straight. <laughs> Good to know. I mean, like I said, you know, yes. I told you, we've got, we got alumni who, Yep. They've been looking forward to this talk for a while. Good. And then going back to the musical Rama, I think, um, I don't know if you caught that, but they are hoping to do one in the fall of 2024. Outstanding. And would that be up here or somewhere else? Like, what is it? I imagine it would be up here at the Rosé, but uh, according, according to Jared, the chair, that's something that uh, they want to get on the schedule for fall of 2024. So stay tuned. Yeah, good. So Laura, do you know, does the pep band travel to any away games? Yeah, I was actually just going to get to that. I've never actually traveled to any, but they do um, get emails from the president and uh, the chairs a lot about, um, I know they, I don't really know the farthest they've traveled, but I know they do go to Northern occasionally. Um, yeah, I don't know how extensive that is. That might be a question for Matt. We, we have in the it's been a little while now but um because i don't know if they're having the great lakes invitational tournament uh in, in the same way that it's been going on but if if we were part of that tournament they would let us take us what we would think of as a small band of maybe only 60 people or something like that or 45 or whatever the number was they let us use so th that's the the only away games that i've seen us travel to in my time mm -hmm. Yeah, so we don't go to every game. Uh, we generally try to go to pretty much just the most important games, like uh, GLI, the Great Lakes Invitational, uh, so long as we are allowed to play it. Uh, last year, it was held at another school's arena who didn't let us for some reason. But when it was at Little Caesars Arena, we generally try to take a band there. And then, uh, like Chad Ackley said, when we make playoff tournaments, uh, we try to send a band to those for really as many different games as we can go to. So not just hockey, uh, when our volleyball and basketball teams make it to playoffs, we try to send a band there too, to support them as much as we can. And we don't usually get to take a big fancy coach bus like the players, uh, it's usually van rentals or sometimes even carpools, but uh, we, we do what we can to get there and bring some spirit for the school. Yeah, I was at the GLI pre-pandemic and the band was there and, and the, I mean, it, I, and I can't remember who we were playing against, but it was, um, it was tremendously impactful to have that band there because the, the energy of, of the band is just so amazing that it, that it invigorates the team and, and the crowd. I mean, it just brings everybody together. So I, I can understand why they wouldn't let you guys into uh, you know an away game probably because they know that we, um, it, it would be the um, morale piece. We would um, we would win on morale only. 
<laughs> the Northern Michigan football team has allegedly banned us from going because we take away home field advantage because we bring so much spirit. So we're only allowed to attend as students as regular fans and not play any instruments. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's why we weren't allowed to perform at GLI last year. I think um, State and U of M might have a rule against the Huskies pep band too. That's what I, <laughs> I don't know if that's true. It's just grossly unfair. Oh, and Carrie Irons says there was no striped overalls in 1973 either. So we're moving the beginning of striped overalls into the 70s at this point. We'll, we'll figure it out probably by the end of um, this episode. Yeah. And Carrie, Carrie did talk about uh, the hockey game when uh, walking to the CHA tournament in 96. So a couple of way opportunities that folks there. And then uh, there was someone who mentioned Joe Lewis Arena as well. Oh, Alexandra, Frozen Florida Grand Rapids when I was in my second year, 2016-ish. Okay. Does the symphony play Sibelius? Yes, they just did a couple of weeks ago. They played the Swan of Tuonela. Very beautiful and kind of dark piece featuring the English horn, which is horribly mislabeled. It should be called the angled horn. Um, it's not English in any way. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, we just played that with the KSO. All right. Um, Denise says there were multicolored striped overalls in 77, which means they appeared after 73 and on or before 77? I think, I think they ran out of stock with some of those different overalls. And, and I think that's how we ended up ultimately. I think it took some years maybe until we agreed, well, the best thing might be gold <laughs> and black. You know, I don't know. <laughs> no, the multicolor ones look like, um, you know, straight out of the Bible, um, you know, the multicolored coat. They have all kinds of different colors, it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. It, so what's up with the panda head up on the shelf, asks Chad. <laughs> um, there was a certain thing we were doing, uh, and I believe it was probably a pep band concert, and we just thought it would be enjoyable to have one of our members put on a panda head and maybe um, move through the crowd while we were playing. And um, I ended up keeping it in my office. <laughs> Still there, ready to do whatever it can do whenever it needs to do that. Um, <laughs> we also have. Here we go. Just one more second here. And while he's doing that, hey, we do have a, a great travel fund that's supported by uh, Doug and Mary Lindgren uh, that helps support the pet band and travel. So I want to point that out. I yeah. want to thank them for it. I know they're on the call. Well, also, and. Um, I was going to say, uh, if Sue can post, Steve, if you can send Sue a link to post in the in the chat, if anyone is inspired to give to um, to the music program, um, she will come up with a link to put in there. Um, sure. Or if you send it to her, she'll post she'll post whatever you send. All right, now we're getting conflicting data. So Glenn Lawrence says the strip overalls were part striped overalls were part of the pep band in seventy one. So it seems that some it all happened in the seventies, uh, and I could see how how that how everybody might might have wanted. See, they always reminded me of prison overalls. Is that were they intended to look like prison overalls? Does anybody know? I don't think so. They're just. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. What is the theme for the concert this year, Laura? Do you know? Oh, yeah, I, I, I could tell you. It's called Stripes and Stripes Forever. <laughs> How apt. Yep. <laughs> and, and what do you have in your hand there? This is one of our favorite. Oh. You're going to have to tell us what he's saying. Here we go. I'll do it again. It's John Cleese. It's a stuffed John Cleese with a couple of phrases that he can say from the Holy Grail, which is okay. 
<laughs> one of our most popular books of our comedy Bible or whatever it is. Um, yeah. So Dean forces the NMU ban of the pet ban occurred in 1984 after the 83 season. I'll be darned. So you probably contributed to that ban, ban damnation. <laughs> well, I wasn't here then, but yes, yes, the ban definitely did that. Yep. Fascinating. Yeah. All right. Students, do you see questions we should be answering? Yeah, uh, one person asked about the verses of the engineer song. And uh, we do still have the, the, the verse about the minor and the upper Malamutes. Uh, we don't have the one, or we don't have the other one that you mentioned, but right now we have two verses of really lyrics, two more verses of basically just words. Uh, one is we are, we are, we are, we are, we are. And the other one is Civ, 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 which we yell at the hockey goalies because of a sieve being something that allows things through it, you know, making fun of the hockey goalies for allowing pucks through their defense. And, we, only uh, make, kinda, we, only make, we only make fun of the opponent's hockey, hockey, uh, you know. Yes, of course, them. never <laughs> ours. But they kind of, uh, the songs kind of evolve over time. So there's no saying how long that particular set of lyrics will stay before things get added or taken away. Laura, do you see any you want to you want to pull out? Um, I am looking. I see things, but I don't know how to. I can't answer the ones I'm finding. Well, but some are just some are just quick. Like um, Larry asks, are there any? Do you play any Finnish specific music, or does Pep Band play? Pep Band does not play any specific uh, Finnish music that I'm aware of. We still do the the waltzy thing, right? What is that one? The blue shirt waltz. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. always played at every hockey game. It is. Yep. Yep. And the second intermission. Mm -hmm. uh, the Superior Wind Symphony has a bit of a Finnish theme in our December concert coming up here. I do. Yep. Well, that'll be good. When is the concert? You guys have to do it before you all leave town. So it's probably early in December, right? Uh, it's probably, yes. It must be. In December, it's on the Rosé calendar. Um, I'd have to look it up to know. I'll see if I can find it. I'll send it in the chat. Awesome. Um, yeah, somebody asked about the plastic mannequin at the football game last October. Uh, that was not a one football game occurrence. That mannequin is named Candy, and she is an integral part of the percussion section and is really just a figurehead for the school spirit. A valued member of the section. Hmm. And we do still break out for You Are My Sunshine. And that's typically for graduating seniors at the end of their last seasons with whatever sports teams they're in at Michigan Tech. Um, Mike, could you tell a little bit about your work with finding music for band by underrepresented composers? Yeah, well, so another reason I like my job is that uh, when I was here as band director and uh, things relating to George Floyd happened in the world um, as somebody who had been around lots of different people in lots of different places in the world, I thought um, I would like to do whatever I can to try and help us all to think about what we've been doing and see if we can make it a little bit more inclusive and for, for all kinds of people. And so I announced to my mentor, um, Mike Irish, and uh, then I kind of double checked with Jared to make sure that he thought it would also be an okay and idea. And I said, I wanna start programming music of people uh, um, of, of color and specifically pieces written by women. I want to do mostly just that for a long time until I'm tired of it. And, 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 um, so I have been. I have been doing that for now a, a number of, of uh, years since uh, COVID first hit. And, uh, and it's been really interesting. I, I learned about all kinds of music I'd never heard of before. 
And I think it's all amazing and good and deserves to be performed. And I'm very thankful that I work at a place that allows me to do this. It doesn't tell me I have to continue to use the same music that we've been playing for hundreds of years. Um, um, so, yeah. yeah. Well, and I just want to thank, I, I know that there's a lot of generous people who support um, the band and in particular, Doug and, and Mary, um, thank you for your support. Uh, it, it's truly transformational. Um, and uh, so we are coming up on the hour. Um, I am pretty well known for, for stopping at seven because I'm so hungry for my dinner. Uh, but um, I, I, I wanted to, um, I'm gonna give each of you a chance to, to say a few remarks, starting with Laura uh, and then ending uh, with Mike um, uh, and Matt in between. But from me, I, I just wanna thank all of the audience uh, who have joined us here, whether you're watching this now or you're watching it later because it was recorded. It, it, um, you have been watching Michigan Technological University's um, Husky Bites, uh, we call it that because we eat it usually during dinner. And um, we've been hearing about the various music experiences that students can have um, while majoring in whatever it is they wish to. Uh, and as Mike said earlier, um, here students can just focus on the joy in music. Uh, uh, yeah. and, and so um, I, I really, that resonated with me, that was in the article. So with that, I'm going to now pass it over to um, Laura for just a, a, some last remarks, and then you'll pass it to Matt. Okay. Um, I just want to say that throughout my time here at Michigan Tech, um, I've been a member of the Superior Wind Symphony and the Huskies Prep Band since I first came to Michigan Tech in 2019. Um, it's been nothing but a positive experience. It's been extremely helpful in keeping my my head level. Um, it's been a lot of fun, learned a lot of great things, especially learning um, how to perform like music from other ethnicities and lots of different styles. And it's been, it's been a lot of fun, a great experience. And I think I've learned a lot in my time here. Well, and it's been wonderful to have you on this evening. Thank you for your time, Matt. Yeah, well, it was fantastic being here. I'm glad I was able to talk about some of my time in the music programs here at Michigan Tech and uh, the alumni here. I hope it was nice to look back on what I think is the best part of going to school here, which is being involved in music, even if it's not necessarily going to be your profession. All right, and Mike, will you close us out? Yeah, I, I am fortunate to visit many parents that will bring their children up to sometimes two years before they're even gonna graduate. They come and visit and they wanna ask a bunch of questions um, or where they'll get here and I'll meet them then. But one of the things they often say is they think their child is happier when they're making music than when they're wrestling with all of the other mathematical concepts. And, um, and one of the things that that's great about music as an art, art is always only in the eye of the beholder. So you can tell someone who is just beginning to play an instrument that they're doing a fantastic job by making any sound out of it at all. And you can mean that, and it's absolutely true. Um, and you can't do that in calculating. <laughs> no offense to calculators, um, but, but you know what I'm saying? Like you can, you can have a positive outcome all the time. You can, you can fix it that way. You can, you can set it up so that you feel encouraged and, and uh, like you belong and you, you're happy to be there. Yeah. Well, thank you everyone. Thank you, Stephen, for helping us with um, manage the slides and things. Thank you, Sue. Thank you, um, the whole team. Uh, we'll see you next week. And remember, it, it might end up in a marital spat because we are going to be talking about some difficult topics in the kitchen. Okay. So see you next week, everybody. Thank you, Jenna. Thank you, Steve. Awesome.